Kevin Mayo, and today we are drinking Treehouse Brewing Julius. This is their signature IPA. Uh, Treehouse is, uh, well, it's the beer legend. Everybody's looking for Treehouse. It's one of the most popular breweries out there. I literally live probably 20 miles away, and I never go there, mostly because I don't feel like dealing with the line. But I dealt with it tonight, went out there, stopped. They had this, and they had Hayes. I bought the maximum, which is six cans each of both of them. Uh, the Hayes review will be coming. Even though I did review Hayes a couple of years ago when you could only buy it in Growlers, uh, now they do have a cannon line. They used to be in just a small shed. Now they are across the street where they, do a, they have more capacity and a canning line. They had a 190 cases to stop the day today. And uh, they ran out. I just checked the website a few minutes ago. They, they've been out. I don't know when they ran out, but they ran out. Um, this was literally canned yesterday. They canned it yesterday, sold it today. They will can some more tomorrow, probably, and again on Friday. And I don't know if it'll be Julius. I don't know what they have in the fermenters. But they will can all that, and they'll sell all that over the next couple of days. So they're tremendously popular. And looking online, I may be the only beer geek who has never reviewed this beer. I have tried it. I tried it once years ago. Again, when you can only get it on Gralas, a friend of ours got it, and we split it. So I have tried it. I have had it. Uh, you are fortunate to be holding Treehouse Brewing Company's flagship American IPA Julius. Julius is a bright tropical beer filled with flavors and aromas of peach, mango, passion fruit, and a melange of citrus. It is gentle on the palate while it's still incredibly hop saturated. It is a result of uncompromising dedication to fresh, pro progressive, delightful beer. So, a little hard to read sometimes with the light coming up off the thing. So, um, lost my train of thought. But again, beer geeks love it. It's one of the most popular beers in the world. And we're going to go ahead and crack it at this point because I'm just flapping my gums. So, as always, if you like the reviews, please subscribe. We're always looking for friends. And go ahead and leave comments because we love talking about beer. And now I remember what I was going to talk about. And I was going to talk about, I think this is really one of the beers that was way at the forefront of the whole New England style uh, aromatic juice bombs. I think probably uh, Heady Topper, maybe some of the... Um, some of the um, Hill Farmsteads, and then I think these guys were really probably the third guys on the scene. I know uh, Trillium gets a lot of love now, and then there's other beers out there that people go crazy for, but I think those are probably the two or three that were really, I know when this first started coming out, I guess probably five years ago now, it, I mean, it was a revelation, and it was just a strictly word of a mouth thing. You know, the, the beer geek world wasn't as developed as it is now. I mean, I think of all the guys that have come online with reviews since I've been doing it, and I was far from first, so. Anyway, now I'm done flapping my jaws. Let's go ahead and take a take look at it, and it's exactly what you'd expect. A beautiful, hazy, lovely, yellow into orange. We've got about, oh, probably, I guess we do have close to three fingers of just slightly off-white head on it, nice tight bubbles. It is 6.8% alcohol. So now we'll do the aroma. More pine than I expected. Pineapple. Mango. Orange juice. Grapefruit. Just lovely aromas coming up off of that. A little bit of, I mean, again, the juice bomb. Exactly what you're expecting from it. But I was surprised. I was expecting, not expecting, it's just the reputation. I was expecting a little less piney note on it. Ah, that's beautiful. Almost don't want to drink it. Almost. And it's everything that it was cracked up to be, and it follows the aroma beautifully. It really is a great beer. It's 
surprisingly enough, you do get a little bit of the malt background up front. A little bit of toasted, I wouldn't call it caramel, a lot of times I use toffee caramel. It's not that prevalent, but a little bit of uh, like bready cracker. Orange juice. Oh, mango, pineapple. The pine is there, but it's more laid back. It's more at the back of the palate, or like an underlying flavor rather than up front in your face. Finish is quite dry. A lot of hop resin on the tongue. Just, yeah, just a beautiful beer. Just a beautiful beer. If you could get this every day of your life, you'd be a happy man or a woman. Really. I don't want to end this. I'm just going to keep sipping it and talking about it because it's so freaking good. Again, orange juice, mango, pineapple, a little bit of pine, uh, probably a little bit of grapefruit when I really dig it out of there. Finishes dry, and uh, it's quite refreshing. Just a beautiful beer. Uh, definitely an A beer. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I think the highest score I've ever given out is a 99, and I think I've done that twice. Once was the Heady Topper. The other time would have been to the, to the Haze. I might have given 100 to the Haze, which is, I'll review that in the next day or two. Um, in a can, I reviewed it in a, uh, but this I think is just, and we're talking a smidge, uh, so let's give it a 97, 97 out of 100, till next time, keep drinking.